2017 season uh, here on Game Night Live. So, uh, as you can see, the uh, South Bacon side of the stands is almost full, and there's a lot of excitement uh, for this thoroughbred program entering the 2017 season. Yeah, and I mean, when you go through what they've gone through in terms of not having winning seasons, and not that they were awful every year. I mean, they had five and five seasons mm -hmm. and stuff like that, but to not have winning seasons and then go from that to all of a sudden you've got you're that close. And you've got a lot of talent coming back. So there's no question there's a lot of excitement. As a matter of fact, I've heard some folks at the school who think this year's team might be better than last mm -hmm. year's, even though they did lose some key players. And on the Silver Bluff side, as I said, we were here uh, on campus on Wednesday to mm -hmm. shoot our uh, uh, school spotlight segment that you'll see at halftime. And one of the things that people around this campus were talking about this week is they feel like in the second year of this coaching staff that there will be a, a little more familiarity that they think, and maybe that'll breed some more success. Well, yeah, and you know, look, Burton Abel took some hits last year when the team struggled early. Mm -hmm. uh, when you've got a tradition-rich program and that happens and you're a newcomer, not from the area, even from the Columbia area, uh, that's going to happen. So what he's got to do is put all that aside and kind of make it us against the world kind of a thing. And uh, this community, when they, if, if they're playing hard and, and they're putting out effort, this community is going to follow them. They, you know, that's what they do. And it is, a, it is something to be proud of, that tradition. But these kids... They don't care about that. They want to keep that tradition going with wins that they are a part of. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they, they start off with a tough test tonight, but like I said, last year they had four turnovers, fumbles, not counting interceptions, four fumbles. They allowed a kickoff return for a touchdown on the opening kickoff. They allowed a punt return for a score. So it was one of those nights where everything went wrong. It's a little bit sloppier field, which I think plays maybe to Silver Bluff, who just likes to run the football. And maybe they, that's their goal, I think, is to keep that football away from South Aiken as much as possible tonight. And you, you spoke to the tradition here at Silver Bluff. I mean, this is a program, this is a school with only roughly between 600 and 700 students. And I saw uh, Burton Abel said to us this week that South Aiken has uh, some 700 more students. Yeah. Th and that translates to the football field because if you look at the rosters, South Aiken has 21 more players on their sideline than Silver Bluff does. And on a night like tonight where it is hot and it is sticky and they've been in the heat all day, as well. There's a reason they have classifications. When you've got a pool of talent with 700 more kids, double the size of a school, sure, you're going to have more kids mm -hmm. coming out for the program. You're going to have more talent uh, overall in the program, you assume, as well. So that's why they have classifications. But I like when we throw it out sometimes to get a chance to see two great programs, in Silver Bluff's case, a tradition rich, and in South Bacon's case, kind of the upstart. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that they go at it early in the season like this. All right, again, we are in a weather delay here in Petticoat Junction. We are awaiting kickoff, currently scheduled for 8.15. They're waiting for a storm uh, to pass by the area. It looks like we are getting ready for our national anthem. Everybody is standing. And while we do that, we will take a quick break and return on Game Night Live. Back in Petticoat Junction, where the National Anthem has just wrapped up, and we are about five minutes away from the season opener here on Game Night Live against uh, between Bacon and Silver Bluff. And again, if you're just joining us, we are actually about 45 minutes late kicking this thing off. They, they moved game time to 8 o'clock earlier today in the heat of the day because of heat concerns. And uh, then just a few minutes ago, right as we came on the air, uh, they moved the kickoff to 8.15. Uh, because we had some lightning in the area, but uh, that appears to have subsided, and it looks like we are just minutes away from getting this thing kicked off between the thoroughbreds and the bulldogs. Uh, while on a delay, uh, there are several other games across the area that have kicked already kicked off. We can give you a, a few score updates uh, right now in the first quarter. Grovetown and Burke County are still scoreless. I got a quick North update Augusta on that one. Yeah, sorry, um, I just got an update there. Grove, uh, Burke took an early 7-0 lead, but Grovetown has just scored. It's 7-7 early in the second quarter in that one. 7-7 late in the second quarter in that one. North Augusta's off to a good start. They're up 14-0 on Lakeside in the first. Thompson as well, 14-0 over Laney. That's also a first quarter score. And Aquinas and Prince Avenue Christian uh, up in the Athens area are scoreless also in the first quarter. And... And an update there. That, these County. are coming fast and furious, aren't well, they? Well, it's a correction. The Burke County uh, game is actually Burke 14 nothing. Grovetown did not score. And uh, according to the uh, buddy of mine, that Grovetown looks a little tired. They're playing guys on both sides of the ball, and they're already getting a little worn down by that Burke County ground attack. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, Burke County should be a force to be reckoned with this year, as they are every year. All right, we are uh, about ready for the coin toss. Let's take it down to the middle of the field again in Matt Lane.
Congratulations on being captain tonight, guys. It's a big responsibility for you, okay? A couple of job duties that you have to worry about is if there's a penalty. If white foul, I'm going to be hollering silver captain, silver captain. Same thing. If they commit a foul, I'm going to be hollering white captain, white captain. Make sure you guys come and find me so I can give you your penalty options. Usually your most advantageous option first. Does not mean you have to accept or decline that penalty. Look to a bench to see if the co coach wants to accept or decline, okay? Remember, you cannot call time out before you give me your decision. The other part about being captains that makes you cool is you guys are the leaders of the team, okay? If you see your team doing something you don't like, put a stop to it. Same thing you guys. You see your team doing something you don't like, unsportsman likewise, better y'all pull a stop to it than us, okay? We don't want to be refereeing this game into a particular way. Y'all take care of it, okay? We don't have to. I'm the referee tonight. My name is Mr. Johnson, all right? On the crew of officials with us, linesman, Mr. Thompson. Line judge, Mr. Falal. Back judge, Mr. Marchant. And our umpire is Mr. Q. You guys have questions about the game, make sure you get with us so we can help you out, all right? Home team, that's my heads, that's my tails. Visitors, heads, tails. As the visitor, you get to call the call. So call. He said tails. If I drop it, we will do it again. It is a tail. You have the option to kick, receive, defend, or defer. You want to receive. You want to receive the football. Yes, sir. You want to kick up the chin, do you want to defend? Defend the scoreboard. You want to defend the scoreboard. Silver, put your black back to the scoreboard. White, swing around, face them. I'm thinking it's one to toss. Is elected to receive. Let's go. Gentlemen, shake hands. Let's go. Right, we expect good sportsmanship throughout the game. All right, so South Aiken has won the toss, and A.B., it won't take us long to get our first look at that high-powered offense. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. Let's take a look while we got a moment at our four keys to the game. Uh, South Aiken taking on Silver Bluff, the number three ranked team in the state in South Aiken thoroughbreds. South Aiken, play fast, wear down a smaller, in terms of numbers, smaller Silver Bluff squad, and get the ball to their playmakers in space. They've got a number of them led by their running back, Chris Roberts. For Silver Bluff, they want to slow the pace down, make it an ugly game, and the field might be conducive to that, and then also create turnovers. That's what South Aiken did to them last year. Silver Bluff wants to return the favors this year and keep that South Aiken offense off the field as much as they can. I can speak to the field conditions just a little bit. I was down there right before the game, and we haven't had any rain since then. There's a lot of standing water on, on the sides of the field, but the field itself looked like it had drained pretty well. But hopefully the footing will be all right for these guys. As we get ready to kick off the 2017 season in Petticoat Junction, South Aiken at Silver Bluff, we are ready to go. Picking it away for Silver Bluff. is Oscar Lopez, left-footed kicker. I don't know if he slipped. There's a flag down here. There's a big chunk of divot behind him. It looks like he slipped. We were just talking about the field conditions. And that is not a good start for Silver Bluff. We have a flag down on the near side as well. They've been offside. And there was offsides on Silver Bluff. So that may actually work out to their their benefit. Yeah, they get a little bit of a break yeah, they, there. <laughs> South Aiken was about to take the ball over at their own 45-yard line, and instead we'll line it up and try it again. Back deep to receive for South Aiken, Des Kitchens and Dre. Yeah, two of the playmakers we were talking about getting the ball in space. Kitchens last year, seven touchdown grabs. 
and they said he will be the go-to guy in this offense this year with the uh, graduation of uh, Tankley Richardson. All right, so now we're underway. Happy New Year, everybody. High school football is back, and South Aiken will take over and start its possession at the 36-yard line. Yeah, this is like the Southeastern New Year. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it always is. is. Every year, that's exactly how I feel on the first day of football season. It is like a brand new year is upon us. And there is Des Kitchens. We just talked about him. 631 yards of catches last year, seven touchdowns to go with it. He is lined up on the near side. And he was the number three or four target last year uh, and still put up those numbers. So here we go. And immediately to the air and almost intercepted. That was John Green who had a shot at it. And again, that slippery field might have kept him from intercepting that ball. Yeah, I think there was some miscommunication between the quarterback and the receiver there, which you wouldn't expect. They've been together for a long, long time, but it looks like that's what happened on that play. And let's be completely honest, this season has already started out better than, or this game has already started out better for Silver Bluff than it did last year when South Aiken took the kickoff back. Absolutely. Well, this is up the middle. Chris Roberts, the big running back with big yardage. Uh, first down and then some. One of the top running backs in South Carolina, over 2,000 yards. 26 rushing touchdowns, four receiving touchdowns. He is a star, no doubt, for this thoroughbred squad. And we see why early on here as South Aiken moves the chains. It'll be first and ten thoroughbreds at the Silver Bluff 45, so the T-Breds in the Bulldog territory for the first time. And South Aiken, of course, they run this spread offense to the air. He's open. And another first down made by Trey Thomas, given looks about, about 23, 24 yards on the catch. Well, Boynton last year, 30 touchdown passes over 2,500 yards, or right at 2,500 yards passing. And a group of 30 scores a year ago. Yeah. That's unreal. No doubt turned this program around, got everybody excited about high school football in Aiken. Four wide again, but they'll keep it on the ground. And Roberts is wrapped up quickly by the Silver Bluff defense. A whole bunch of gray shirts in there on the stop. The number I saw get out of there first was Jamie Bing, 5'11", 191-pound junior. Yeah, we always joke about Silver Bluff. They seem to have like 20 of those 5'10", 190-pound <laughs> guys. They can just put in at running back or linebacker, and that's what they do. Now they lost a defensive starter. Uh, Desmond Lawrence off last year's team. He actually transferred to South Aiken, mm -hmm. and he'll be starting at defensive end for the Thoroughbreds tonight. And I know that's a loss South Aiken hated, or excuse me, Silver Bluff hated. On the ground again, and again it is Roberts, and he is up close to a first down. Looks like he might be a couple yards shy right up the gut. Yeah, Roberts just got better and better as the season went on. Preseason, you kind of had heard about Boynton from the year before. You knew about Tansy Richardson. You knew about some of their other weapons, Harold Hilton. Uh, but a lot of people didn't know much about Roberts, and he just kept piling up yards, piling up yards, and uh, he is no doubt, it, it, while Boynton gets a lot of attention, and so does Kitchen, he, I think, is the star of the offense. He's already up close to 40 or 50 yards on this drive alone. He's back there alone in the backfield again with Boynton. And this time, it is Des Kitching. Des Kitching to the corner, and Des Kitching, a South Aiken touchdown. Well, I love when coaches do that. When you've got an athlete, get him the ball. And get him the ball in a number of ways. Obviously, you can throw it to Kitchens, but there, they ran him through and handed it off, uh, basically an off-tackle run for their wide receiver, and he turns it into a touchdown. So the South Aiken offense, Picks up right where it left off last year. The thoroughbreds outscored opponents by almost 400 points that is a amazing. year ago. That is amazing. And they are back at it. Here with the extra point is Marion Sanders. And it is no good. So a bit of a break for Silver Bluff. It's a Bulldog still trail. South Aiken leads it 7-6 to six with Ben Madison right on the nose to play here in the first quarter. You know, good drive for South Aiken. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get that extra point if you're a South Aiken fan, but still, they flex their muscle on that drive without question. And they moved the ball almost at will on that yeah. possession. But Silver Bluff is not alone in that. Anybody that uh, South Aiken will, played last year can tell you.
So now it's the T Brad's turn to kick it off. Get a chance to see what the Silver Wolf offense can do. You know, we saw Silver Wolf twice last, or, 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 or saw them last mm -hmm. year after that South Aiken loss. They really bounced back because a few games later we saw them against Fox Creek and they dominated the game on Game Night Live. It looked like a completely different Silver Bluff team. Sanders to kick it away for South Aiken. The Silver Bluff numbers are a little bit difficult to see with that blue on gray. Well, we'll find out. The kick is away. And it was John Green who almost made the interception, the interception earlier in the game, straight up the middle. Silver Bluff will set up shot first and ten at the 22. First chance to see the Silver Bluff offense. They're and playing it's a new look offense. It is. It is. And they're, but they're playing a defense in South Aiken that despite losing a kid in Colby Campbell who had over 200 tackles, Chris Hamilton thinks this defense might be better. They start nine seniors. All their linebackers and secondary players are seniors, a lot of them three-year starters. So he's really excited. As much as the offense, you know, gets the attention, he's excited about this year's defense. And Burton Abel made a change this year, going from the wing tees to the veer offense. Yeah. And he says he just feels like that's an offense that he can that better use a lot, utilize the kind of players he has. So that's not going to help right off the bat. It looks like he had some trouble on the snap and the Bulldogs fall on it. Yeah, no matter the offense, you've got to be able to get the ball yeah. to the quarterback. And, you know, look, first game of you know, the season, we know we're going to see this some. But as a coach, it's still, you know, you lose what little bit of hair you got left by the time the season starts. That'd be nuts. He's brought in a couple of new assistant coaches on the offensive side of the ball. Josh has in charge of the running back. Cody O'Brien brought in from Wagner Sally to take care of the offensive line. And that's going to be a keeper in about, oh, two or three yards off the left side. And almost back in the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Jamal Washington. Quarterback for Silver Bluff, uh, looking for a big year this year because he spent a lot of last year on the sidelines with a couple of different injuries. Yeah, he did, and uh, you know, and another guy with a new role making that tackle uh, uh, for South Aiken was number ten, DJ Parker. Mm -hmm. Last year he had over 140 tackles, had 18 tackles for loss, but he's moving more to the inside. He was on the outside last year, taking place of Colby Campbell, who graduated into Presbyterian now. Dogs are going to kind of are going to try to throw, and it is complete to Green, close to a first down. Going to be about, oh, I'd say, what and a half short, maybe. A good looking throw from there. Yeah, well, the quarterback from Silver, nice looking throw, right on the money. The only place he could really put it, he had a small window there, and they spotted it. If you're Silver Bluff, I don't think you like that spot a whole lot, but it looks like he's going to be about a full three yards short here. Well, last year. Always one of the most dangerous spots for opposing teams against South Carolina. You have Tansy Richardson back returning kicks, one of the most dynamic kick returners we've had in a long time, whether it be punt or kickoff. The Silver Bluff are short on, they will be in a kicking situation, and as you mentioned, A.B., they're pitching back there this year. We've already seen what he can do, but nowhere to go this time as he's wrapped up by Gray Shirt. That's the one thing I wonder about with South Aiken going forward. Do they have that game breaker mm -hmm. with the way they have with Richardson and the way they had with Hilton, for that matter, and Brandon Carter? They had more of a game breaking type players at receiver. I don't know if they have that. Defense might be better. The running backs a year older. The quarterbacks a year older, and they do have some weapons. Have those when they get in, you know, playing the big powerhouses in South Carolina. So this is a dangerous spot right now for Silver Bluff. You don't want to fall behind any farther than you already are. And uh, now we have wrestles on the field. Water break. We do this every now and then, early in the season, with the with the heat situation that it is. So they have a timeout on the field. We'll take out with them and return to Petticoat Junction after this. South Aiken leads Silver Bluff six nothing on Game Night Live. South Aiken football first and ten from their own thirty-eight yard line. Up the middle, and it's Roberts, and plenty of room, all the way down inside the Silver Bluff 30-yard line before he finally stopped by John Green. 
Well, if you're Silver Bluff, you've got to be so worried about going and throwing the football, but that is the guy I think you have to stop first, uh, Roberts. That's easier said than done. Again, last year over 2,000 yards. Very, very tough customer because he's got the speed, but he also, you see how well built he is. And there you see a nice hole, and he made one really good cut to get to the outside on our instant replay. Good look there at that run. Four wide now for South Aiken. And it's Boynton to throw, and it is complete. Over the middle to Drake Patterson. Good for oh, three or four yards. A little wide receiver screen there where they kind of bring him back to the middle of the field as they're taking everybody out outside and hoping he can cut across the grain. Silver Bluff defended that one pretty well. And another thing South Aiken does, A.D., is they don't take their foot off the gas. They don't give you a chance to catch their breath. It's Roberts again. And this time, Silver Bluff equal to the task, pushes him back. He might have gotten one. Yeah, good job up front that time by the Bulldogs. And that's what they've got to do. Again, you got to key on Roberts and slow him down a little bit. That's certainly going to be a good thing for you. And then you've got to focus on maybe putting some pressure on Boynton. So that'll bring up third down, about third and five for South Aiken. And this is where Silver Bluff really needs to get their defense off the field if they're going to keep up in this game tonight. Boynton looking over to the sidelines to get some instruction. You see this spread offense with you got four wide again. Now another look at the sidelines by Boynton. Great size up front. Look at that offensive line for South Bacon. Just not a lot of weaknesses, honestly, A.D. They'll try to get it on the ground with a Robert. And he's going to be close. And I believe he got it. Yes, he did. First down, South Aiken. Damian Green came up and did what he's supposed to do, made a good hit on the running back. But unfortunately for Silver Bluff fans, it was right at the first down marker, and Roberts was able to get that extra yard or two for the first. So fresh set of downs for South Aiken. They are at the 15-yard line with 6.24 left opening quarter. The man in motion is Trey Thomas. But it's going to be... Roberts again, and down again, South Aiken. And I tell you what, Roberts is in for a big, big year. I hard to stop what he did last year, but he's on a pretty good pace right now. So, 12 nothing. Thoroughbred off to an early lead, and it looks like Chris Hamilton is going to elect to go for two. See the answer replay here, just great blocking and a big hole for Roberts. Virtually. Yeah, good shot there by the crew as Roberts gets the touchdown. So after the missed extra point, after the first touchdown, T. Brez will try for two here. Out of the gun is Boynton. And the give is to Kitchens, I believe. He's in either way. And it's Kitchens. And it was Kitchens who scored the first touchdown of the night. And it is 14 to nothing. South Aiken. Uh, this very thoroughbred squad here, no doubt about it. We'll take a quick time out and be back with more WJBF Game Night Live as Silver Bluff Trails 14 up at home. Fourteen nothing, South Aiken leads Silver Bluff on the opening night of Game Night Live here in 2017. Once again, it'll be Marin Sanders to pick it away for the third. And back deep to receive. Again, it'll be John Green from his 10. And he hits a wall of white at about the 25-yard line. They're still dragging him back. And ran in, like you said, that wall. And good, good pursuit on that pitch team by South Aiken. They're going to... Leave the ball, put the ball back at the 20, you know, the 26 yard line or so. That's pretty much where he ran into the South Aiken. Well, the whole team almost. So that's where Silver Bluff will set up shot first and 10. Down 14 nothing, 6.02 left to play. And you see the, the, the sun there behind uh, the scoreboard here in Petticoat Junction. That's nice to see because we have had some weather issues here tonight. Uh, the 
Vince Scully would call that a cotton candy sky. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, despite the fact of that, it's really a pretty good night for football. It's certainly not as hot as I think the guys thought it was going to be. The rain helped. The rain helped a lot. Out for sure. It's been out here since about 4 o'clock, and it was steamy early. All right, here come the bull. With a mountain to climb now, down 14 nothing. Washington going to put back. That's trouble for Silver Bluff. Trying to make something of it is Raekwon Mann, and he's lucky to get back to the 20-yard line before being shoved out by Garrett Pascal. That disaster written all over. Yeah. A little bit slow to develop. What they can pursue was pretty good, and you're right. The running back, Mann, tried to make something out of nothing, but nowhere to go really there. Good job by South Asian's defense. So... Going to be about second and, oh, man, 16 now for Silver Bluff as the Bulldogs are going in reverse. Washington going to throw and long and got a man. Incomplete. We're going to have flags from all over the place. Yeah, I think he got, if you watch closely, the defensive back with his left hand grabbed the receiver's arm. I think that's an excellent call by the official. David Swedenberg, the defensive back, back there with him. Look at some of the... Some of the if there is uh, Swedenberg. If we get a shot of this, I think you're going to see he grabbed the receiver's arm. And an excellent call by the officials. Uh, sure on that. South Aiken players were really wanting an, an uncatchable, but that was very catchable. So the officials need to talk about it. Yeah, the ball, I think, was beautifully thrown, John. I think, I think again, just the receiver only could get one arm on the ball. Three South Aiken players there putting in their two cents worth. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't Kennedy out there for Silver Bluff. South Aiken was one of that waved off, but I don't think there was any chance of that. Wow. That was a really nice throw. It was going to be 15 either way. I'm impressed with the couple of throws we've seen from the Silver Bluff quarterback. They said he is a dual threat guy, and that we haven't seen him throw as much because the Silver Bluff offense is play. Play. ground game. But Personal foul. Nice couple of impressive throws. Buffing the passer. Right, Jamal Washington, the junior. So we have two points. Defense. Penalty is declined. 15 yards. 15 yards. Here's the door. On-field mic is not. Here we go. So we got roughing the passer, and I guess that's the one. Ooh, they had two different penalties, and that's the one they're going to take. Now that just shows you Washington put the money and still took a shot after the fact. Mm -hmm. So that'll move Silver Bluff all the way up to the 35-yard line. There, 35, and give them a first down. The first first down of this game for the Bulldogs. Option. And the pitch is to Mann again, and he's going to break out about three or four yards before he's shoved out of bounds. Nothing wrong with that if you're Silver Bluff. Obviously, you're behind the man, but you'll take four yards any time. Keep the ball and try to move down the field, whether it's, again, you got to get some scores. They want to keep South Aiken uh, off the field offensively. You mentioned in your keys to the game that that, uh, for lack of a better term, ugly up the game a little bit. Yeah. You keep the ball, keep the clock moving. It's now down inside six minutes here in the first quarter. The longer they can keep that South Aiken offense off the field, the better for the Bulldogs. Well, they've done that to a lot of teams here over the years. Yes, they Get have. Get that lead and run the football and run the clock out. And now they've got to come from behind and then try to get run that clock out. Second and eight, up the gut it goes for three or four more. That was Tyler Wooten. Tyler Wooten, one of two Wootens on the Silver Bluff team. His twin brother Tyson is a linebacker. They were as good as any two players on the field last year for Silver Bluff in the game we did against Fox Creek. Washington looked like he was going to throw. Now on the run, loses the football as he goes out of bounds. But he'll be close to a first down. Looks like he's going to be about a yard, yard and a half shy. And now we will have a decision to make here. We were talking about the Wooten. Tyson will be quick to tell you he is, even though they're twins, he's 5'9", and Tyler is 5'7". <laughs> Spoken like a true big brother. <laughs> Literally, two inches bigger. Yeah. Looks like the dogs are going to go for it on fourth down. Nope. Got an equipment 
issue to sort it out. They do look like they're going to go for it, or either they're going to try to draw off Salvation. Could be that as well. In that formation, though, you wouldn't think they're going to try well, to draw they, off. And they did. They did. Wow. They absolutely did. Good call, A.B. Couldn't see who jumped. The first number that I saw was DJ Parker. But also number 21 out. as well for South Asia. Some of the little quick. Uh, there were a couple of them that came across a little early. So Yeah, Nyquil Ryan was the other player I saw. Team effort on South Aiken's part. A good play there by the South Aiken, uh, by the Silver Wolf offense. So if it goes as we expect it to. Approachment, defense, five yards, and results first down. Second first down they picked up on penalties. He said and I know that Coach Hamilton's not going to be pleased with that. They might hear about that on Monday. I got, I got to see if I can hear about it in the locker room at <laughs> halftime. Washington goes back to uh, throw again. Long downfield, and it is complete and room to run. Cervante Green down inside the five-yard line for a big game for Silver Bluff. Well, I tell you what, give Washington credit. He stood up knowing he was going to take a hit. He had a defender right on top of him, and you know what he and he threw it up and let his receiver make a play, and the tall receiver did make a play for him. 5'11", 157 pounds junior is Cervante Green. And the Bulldogs are going to have it first and goal with the ball kissing the five-yard line. And a huge play for Silver Bluff. And again, this drive was kept alive by two penalties on South Aiken. They're now in the Augusta Technical College Zone. 40, 60 yards on that last play, and now workforce opportunities and regional careers with Augusta Technical College. We got a timeout on South Aiken. So the thoroughbreds take a timeout here. As Silver Bluff has marched from its 15 yard line all the way down to the South Aiken five yard line, the most impressive drive we've seen early in this game from yes, Silver Bluff. And if you're Coach Hamilton, you're fussing because you're saying, look, we gave them two first downs, and then we let the receiver go make a play on the ball. We do not. And they're now knocking on the door here for a score. And a big, big, this could be a huge momentum switch in this football game if they're able to punch it in. I forget the play that uh, the throw that Washington made down here to keep the drive going, keep the drive going earlier as well. Yeah, he's looked very good throwing the football. And again, sometimes you just want to give your receivers a chance to make a play, and that's what he sort of did on that long throw. And I'm impressed with him not being afraid to take a shot because twice tonight he hit the defender right in his chest as he let go of the football. Well, again, he, he's a guy who has been chomping at the bit to get back here after being hurt last year and making the most of the opportunity. Again, only a junior, so he's got another year left. First and goal, Silver Bluff from the five. And another whistle. And another flag. We're going to have some scores from around the area at halftime, John, and from briefly perusing the scoreboard, we've got a lot of blowouts going on around uh, the CSRA in week one. Let's just tease it this way and say there are some impressive performances <laughs> yeah. going on yeah, elsewhere. Encroachment. And defense. there's an impressive performance going on here line. with Silver Bluff on Still this drive. That is another South Aiken penalty. And that will move it past the distance on the ground and nowhere to run. Looks like DJ Parker led the charge. South Aiken thought they came out of there with the football, but the officials blew that dead. That would have been a devastating Momentous. play for Silver Bluff. But fortunately for the Bulldogs, unfortunately for the Thoroughbreds, he was, the ball is down, so. South Aiken running in reinforcements. Huge, huge opportunity here that if you're Silver Bluff, you need to take advantage of. Second and goal from about the four. Three back. And again, no to run as a sea of white shirts just eat him alive. First man I saw in there for South Aiken was Jazz Kitchens. Yeah, Kitchens there, Reed Bolin as well, who's the leading returning tackler. And they really just kind of, you know, uh, kind of strung that to the outside and there was nowhere to run. There's Bolin, number 33, very talented linebacker for this team. Got a timeout on the field. 
didn't see who took the. I think it was Silver Bluff. Well, while we've got a second, why don't we run down some of those scores we were talking about? Well, Burke County, I just got another update. Burke County, now Grovetown was impressive in their scrimmage against Thompson, but right now, Burke County, who is one of the better teams in the area, if not the best team, uh, with argument, I guess, with South Aiken, they are rolling. Burke County now leads 28 to nothing mm. with about a minute and a half left in the first half. Some other scores also. Uh, Thompson now at 35 nothing on Laney. And again, Thompson in that scrimmage, but they're a good football team. 14-1 and one last year, lost in the state title game to Cartersville. They have the area's top recruit in Christian Tut. And Laney a little bit down as well this year, John, and they are taking it on the chin tonight. Well, I was on a radio show last night with our good friend John Barnett, who used to yeah. be an assistant coach at Thompson, and we were taught they're looking forward to that thompson Burke County matchup that we'll have yeah. here in Game Night Live Can't wait. later this season. Nathan uh, Edwards, our statistician, and uh, was talking about that with you and I earlier, about what a great atmosphere that was last year in Thompson. Pretty good one here tonight as well on third and goal from the five-yard line. And it's Washington looking to throw, going to keep... Washington at the goal line. Knocked out at the one yard line. Great play there by Garrett Pascal to save the touchdown for South Aiken. Yeah, both Pascal, the two linebackers on that side of the field, came up and made a nice play and just right at the goal line, able to keep him out. So, here we go again. We can do an early <laughs> Ken Nugent one call, that's all right here. Call <laughs> if you're Silver Bluff. I say go ahead and go for it. Well, I think Burton Abel heard you because go for it on four goal to three. You got to keep the ball in Washington's hands. Let him make a play. There's we'll Washington. See. It's a give. Still fighting and short. Well, there's and turnover. And out of the pack with it comes Darius Williams for South Aiken and a missed opportunity for Silver Bluff, a huge play for South Aiken. Well, and also for South Aiken, instead of having the ball at the two-yard line, one-yard line, mm -hmm. with that fumble, you're able to get a little breathing room for your offense. Yeah, they're yeah. going to put the ball down at about the five-yard line, five-and-a-half-yard line. Yeah, so you say instead of being the one-and-a-half, that's four extra yards for your offense to operate. And boy, that is tough. Help. Oh, yeah, and that, that's tough for Silver Bluff. They had such a nice drive going. And now the Silver Bluff defense has a lot of them who go both ways have to put that behind them and try to slow down the South Aiken attack. Flag down on this one. It's going to be coming back. And that was, of course, the talented running back, Robert, who is off to a nice start in 2017. And that's a hold on the T-bread, so we'll wipe that out. And we'll try it again. So remember when we said that fumble saved them five yards? Yeah, well, they gave it back up. <laughs> they gave up two, two and a half of it. Come <laughs> up slightly, and the Thoroughbreds have scored on their first two possessions here in the first half. If you're wondering why we are only in the first quarter, and a lot of games are already at halftime, we were delayed by 45 minutes first due to heat, and then due to possible lightning in the area. Got underway at 8.15 finally. And we're still 3.26 to play here. There's Robert through the middle. Well, he runs so and hard. He's just impossible to bring down. Well, if you're a lineman, you want to work for this guy because you watch him with runs like that where he's dragging defenders and keeping those legs going. You, you want to give him an open hole because you know how hard he's working. And, and what a what an asset to have in a situation like that where your back is up against your own goal line and a guy like that who can push the pile. Yeah, you don't think he's going to fall backwards very often. He's going to fall and get that extra two yards for you. We saw him do that earlier on a first down where he was hit at the marker and was able to fall forward and get a yard and a half for the first down. Picked up seven. He's in the backfield again. He's got the ball again. And this time the Bulldogs are ready for it. And he might have gotten one. Good job up front by Silver Bluff. Again, this is a team with a lot of pride, and they want to you know, show that last year was just a mirage. A uh, tough season they had after so many successful years over the, or seasons over the years. I didn't know you spoke French. <laughs> They'll go four wide again against Roberts back there with Boynton. And 
now they want to talk about it. Third and about four. Because it's so spread out and they're worried about the run, they're going to have one-on-one -on, -one on the receivers, it looks like. All day to throw, and it is complete. It is a first down. It is more. And down the sidelines goes Dez pitching for a huge gain for South Aiken, and now we've got some extracurricular activity after the play. Might have a horse cock. Yeah. And Des Kitchens, that's the most speed he's shown us. Boy, he really accelerated after that football, and he nearly was able to get away down the sidelines. He might have a horse collar tackle. Not sure what the call is. Well, almost 50 on the play itself, and we're going to tack on some more at the end here. That's what happens, though, when you're so worried about Roberts, and then you've got Boynton who can deliver that football on the money and quickly. Still talking about it. And the ball will be at the twenty nine yard line penalty. back up and bring it back to the 40. I never did see what the actual penalty was. Come I did on. not either. Not sure First Matt was able there to. Go. There we go. Yep. So it'll put, the penalty will put South Aiken at the Silver Bluff 40 yard line. The 10 man in motion is Dre Patterson. It's going to go to Patterson and two wide. I'll tell you one thing. You saw Patterson trying to get the football after the incompletion on that play. you got to be ready to do that. That one was a forward pass, but that play sometimes is borderline, and Silver Bluff needs to be ready for that just in case. And unlike you and I here in the booth with Mean TV, they don't have the benefit of replay here That's in high right. school football. So you leave it up to the officials to try to make that determination, which is easier done. Second and ten. Point. All beautifully set up. Roberts with plenty of room to run. It is Roberts for the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Chris Roberts, but that's the call on the flag. Now, there was a Second lag 20, yeah. when Roberts was kind of away from everybody. Not sure what that was. Might be a hold on one of the receivers. Kitchens does not look very happy. South Aiken is retreating. Yeah, Boynton just holding his hands up. He's not happy. There you see the McDonald's signs on the sidelines. One of our great sponsors from some of the McDonald's folks during the third quarter. And that was it, like you said, it was on play. It's 10 yards, 10 but, yards. But it's going to come back. That's so a break for Silver Bluff here, which is about to be down 21 to nothing. Block in the back. Yeah, blocking the offense. back yep. on South Aiken. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Replay second and like down. like you said, it, was, it seemed to be behind the play. Yeah, it looked it, like it, it wasn't going to matter. It didn't look like something that was yeah. going to affect the, the outcome of the play, but makes a huge difference in this ball game. So, still 14 nothing. Minute 47 now to play in quarter number one. A little bit of confusion for the receivers on the far side of the field for South Aiken. Second and one, it'll be a first down and more. Looks like a different back in there and this it time. was. I didn't catch the number. 22. 22, which is Nyquel Ryan, a sophomore. Yeah, earlier I called him out as 21 on accident. That is 22 Ryan. 21 for South Aiken. He gave Chris Roberts a break for a play, and now Roberts is back in there. 21 is Brendan Oliver. Who made the uh, here defensively? Press set of downs for, uh, for South Aiken. Looking to throw. Boynton. Cool. Jesse Sanders down inside the five yard line. I tell you, Boynton put that football, I mean, he had to put it in a tiny spot. I mean, about of, 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 you know, basketball. I mean, that's all he had. 
put it right where the only person that could catch it was the receiver. Watch on the instant replay as he put it right in the one this guy could catch it. Beautifully and threaded needle there by Cody Boynton. And so first and goal now. Yeah, they're in the Augusta Tech red zone. Cody Boynton. Boynton with Roberts behind him. It'll be Roberts. And he's going to be stopped just short, I believe. Boynton won his jack down. Still no signal. And now we get it. It's going to be second down at about the one yard line. Now they can knock it on the door for another score, and you're looking, okay, it might be 21 nothing here at the end of the first, maybe. But Chris Hamilton's got some stuff to fuss about. You had the block in the back. Mm -hmm. You had some, you know, other penalties on defense as Robert goes in for the uh, goes in for the score. So there's some things he can gripe about a little bit, even though they're up big. So Chris Roberts touchdown makes it 20 to nothing, South Aiken. And this time they'll try for the extra point. 25 seconds left in the quarter. Going back to last year, that is 32 touchdowns in 16 games for Chris Roberts. Mm -hmm. Into a ball game. And the extra point is good off the foot of Marin Sanders. 21 to nothing. And if you go back, like you said, to last year, that is now 76 to nothing between these two teams. Last well, like five quarters of play. And that is not something the Silver Bluff fans are used to. Last year's loss was one of the most lopsided in school history. Uh, you look at their tradition. I mentioned uh, in a, from 1985 up until about 2013, 15 times they went to the semifinals. They won the state title five times, runners up twice, and uh, they're not used to this. This is not something they take kindly. And but to get things turned around, what do you do against this powerhouse? right now well you know and that's one thing that is different about high school football than say college football college teams the major powerhouses tend to schedule for lack of a better term patsies early yeah. on so they can kind of get the kinks worked out in high school football it's all about the region it is so as Bert Nabel said this week you bring in a team like South Aiken a 4A powerhouse they're gonna learn some things tonight and they're not gonna see this will be the best team they see all year By regardless far. yes um, so you're right. They'll be ready for anything. And I, I mention that a lot when I'm talking about coaches. I love the coaches that go out and schedule those opponents early in the year. Burt, uh, Grovetown does it. Burt County does it. And I really do think it prepares them for the playoffs, no doubt. Squib kick falling on by Jadakus Wright for Silver Bluff. And the Bulldogs will take over on their own 36-yard line. A lot of folks were excited about this year's. I, I was anticipating this year probably more than, I don't know, in a long time. And we're being told that a little bit of a breeze on the sidelines, not nearly as hot as we expected it to be. Again, we were delayed initially because of heat, trying to push this game back because it was so hot this afternoon. Matt Lane does look nice and cool and calm and collected. He does, there. man. I'm telling you. Attention out to Raekwon Mann, who's got about seven or eight yards, and up close to another Silver Bluff first down. Now yeah, the South Aiken defense lost to, you know, Colby Campbell with over 200 tackles, Chancey Richardson, mm -hmm. who was maybe the best all-around player in the area last year, and they still got a lot of weapons. Uh, so that is how the of play will come to a close with Silver Bluff on the move, but trailing by three scores. Your score at the end of the first quarter. South Aiken, 21. Silver Bluff, nothing on game night long. Start of the second quarter in Petticoat Junction. Silver Bluff down 21 nothing with the football, and it's Washington to throw him looking long. And almost intercepted by Des Kitchens back there. Yeah, great coverage by Kitchens. He became the receiver. Actually, he was wanting a pass interference on the on the wide out from Silver Bluff. So it'll bring up a third down situation for the Bulldogs, who had 64 total yards of offense in the first quarter. AB compared to wait for this 211 total yards for South Aiken. Yeah, only on pace for 844 mm -hmm. yards in the game. Mm -hmm. Well, and also a big number there is the turnover for yep. Silver Bluff. 
uh, really what helped them was South Aiken's penalties, five first quarter penalties, not what you want to have if you're in the thoroughbred. And that's yeah. the one, that's probably the number Chris Hamilton will bring up most at the half. Well, yeah. the number that jumps out to me though, John, just knowing Silver Bluff, is eight yards rushing compared to 125. Mm -hmm. Silver Bluff doesn't get outrushed, period, much less getting outrushed that big in a quarter of football. Now, again, keep in mind, they're playing a much larger school, double their size. A team that lost in the state semifinals a year ago and is ranked number three in the state in quad A right now. Raekwon Mann stopped short of the first down, and now decision time for Burt Nabel. Well, he has shown He's, He's done it already to, once. He, he tried to draw him off once and did it, and then he went for it on fourth near the goal line and did not get it. And I, I understand wanting to go for it, you're down, but then again, do you want to give South Aiken the ball with such good field position again? And clearly it is not an easy decision, so they're going to take the time out and talk it over. And I'm hearing Matt, Matt, Matt down on the sidelines in my ear saying he thinks they're going to punt. And that appears to be what they're going to do. It's just tough. I mean, you don't want to give South Aiken the ball uh, already down. Then again, you're down. You've got to get some points somehow. It's tempting because you're, what, less than a year from it, but yeah. that's a long yard the way this South Aiken defense has played so far tonight. Yeah, they've only given up eight yards rushing mm. first quarter. And if you take out the one big pass play that Silver Bluff had, you're talking about what, 15 yards of offense, maybe? That pass play was, uh, if I remember correctly, a 49-yard pass play. So you're talking exactly 15 yards of total offense without yeah. that play. Mm -hmm. So it will be a punting situation for Silver Bluff. Back deep to receive for South Aiken, Patterson. And to kick it away for Silver Bluff. It'll be a fair catch by Patterson. So excellent field position once again for South Aiken. Yeah, I mean, as if they need it with this offense. But, hey, look, Silver Bluff, like you said, not necessarily that they want to go into a game expecting to lose, but you are doing some things for down the road, for region play, to prepare this team and possibly make a playoff run. Let's take it down to the field and for a sideline report. Matt, what do you got? Thanks, John. Uh, you know, us talking about the coming into the game, South Aiken with a high-powered offense and for – Silver Bluff, kind of that typical uh, offense that we've seen from them in the past this year. They elected to go with the veer, not misdirection. Uh, I think Ashley can really speak to what we've seen the past couple of years that we always used to see with Silver Bluff teams. A lot of misdirection plays. We're seeing in South Aiken than uh, than Silver Bluff that we've been accustomed to seeing in the past couple of years. And some trickery. South Aiken is Dre Patterson's going to go for a long, long score. However. Don't get too excited, South Aiken fans, because there is a flag down way back at the thoroughbred 30-yard line. Yeah, it's right where he broke the play around the left end, and it is going to be a hold. That'll bring it back. So another tough, you know, South Aiken's piling up some penalties and some penalty yards because that was a touchdown, obviously. That's the second touchdown now that yeah. South Aiken called back due to penalties, and they're used to run them, mm -hmm. and uh, you don't see that in this, this offense. And I will say this too, you know, if, if you're South Aiken, or excuse me, if you're Silver Bluff, you, you, Ten yards you want to make some plays, foul. and you know this team's bigger, but you, you also want to keep down. your team confident. Yeah. You know, you've got to have that going forward. And you talk about those old Silver Bluff days. It doesn't hurt when you have a Troy Williamson. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was going through the list of the <laughs> NFL guys. You know, they've got Demarcus Lawrence yeah. playing right, or, or playing with the Cowboys. And Cordrea Tankersley. Cordrea Tankersley's with the Dolphins. And, yeah, you're right, Troy Williamson, a first-round draft pick. Go to Vikings. We've got a timeout on the field here. By the way, all of our sideline reports throughout the year when we go down to check in with Matt, brought to you by our friends at Augusta Auto Auction. They've been with us the entire time since we did game one of Game Night Live. So we appreciate their support each year. We'll have, uh, speaking of sponsors, we're going to have a couple of friends from McDonald's coming up in the third quarter. McDonald's, so important and integral in all the coverage, all the way through from the game, uh, before the game start with our coaches and captains banquet, all the way through Border Bowl, which has become such a big event. Border Bowl last year, South Carolina, able to notch a victory. 
Now, do I get to eat McNuggets while you're doing the interview? <laughs> As, hey, if they bring them, you eat them. <laughs> Actually, that's uh, Nathan had McNuggets on the way to the game. <laughs> we did stop in McDonald's on the way in. Um, by the way, Border Bowl this year, uh, someone in this ball game will definitely be involved because Coach Chris, Chris Hamilton of South Bacon will coach Team South Carolina. He was a man of few words at our banquet <laughs> to, to, when he was talking about coaching the team. It was pretty funny because J.B. Arnold at Jefferson County coaching Georgia's team was pretty talkative. <laughs> That'll be a fun coaching matchup. Yeah, it will two, be. Two of the best in our area for sure. And you got J.B. Arnold who's just consistent, been there for, for a long time at Jefferson County, he's had mm -hmm. some really good teams, and you've got kind of Chris Hamilton who came in here and really turned this program around. They've had talent for a while at South Bay, and you just wondered, so many college recruits and stuff, and you wondered when would they get it turned around. Well, it just shows you, I, I said this at the coaches and captains banquet, it just shows you how important a coach is, mm -hmm. uh, at, especially at the high school level. That last play picked up three. This will be Roberts for more than three, bounces off the and and picks up about five, maybe five and a half. And I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, organization, you know, you watch practices, you only have so much time to practice, especially in the heat that we've got here. Mm -hmm. you, sometimes you're inside, and when you're organized and you're going through practice, you're too much in. And I think a lot of that, you know, you look at some of the coaches that are successful. If you go to their practices, you'll see those are the most structured. Uh, these kids are getting a lot out of practice. There's a big third down for the Silver Bluff offense. It's trying to get South Aiken off the field. It'll be Roberts, and it'll be a first down. And it'll be a first down up to midfield. And Roberts a little slow to get up there. Yeah, everybody holding their breath on the South Aiken side. Looks like maybe, I don't know, but he kind of went up in the air at the end of that play. And you definitely don't want to get him hurt in a game where you're up big. But And to that end, he will take a breather on this next play. And they'll the run good, Nyquil Ryans back in. The good news is he did trot off on his, on his own. Didn't have to have anybody helping him. And being told maybe Atlanta funny it's hard for us to see on the opposite sideline if they're looking at him but we'll tell you as soon as we as soon as we know he's got 122 yards of rushing already we're still early in the second quarter this is Boynt that is Patterson and he's got room to run nice block and finally taken down inside the 20 at the 18 yard line <laughs> I tell you, good job by Silver Bluff number 25, Damian Green, running him down because that looked like it might be a touchdown. Also for South Aiken, number 24, Ryan Mays, the sophomore receiver. You mentioned he threw a good block. He also did a good job of not hitting in the back. He mm -hmm. made it a point to kind of get out of the way of the one defender whose back was turned. Well, I think he gets another big play called back. Yeah. <laughs> be I, Chris Hamilton won't be uh, so soft-spoken anymore. No, no, he won't. Not a man of... That South Aiken in the red zone, and we have lightning flashing off to our right. And yeah, it looks like we might have, wait for it folks, another weather delay here in Petticoat Junction. And if you haven't been a part of an in-game uh, uh, weather delay in high school, it's automatically 30 minutes once there's lightning in the area. And we've seen a couple of flashes off to our right, which if I'm Got my bearings and my geography right. That would be toward the uh, east of us, uh, east or south. You should have seen the look AB just gave me on that one. Yeah. But either way, it's too close for comfort for the officials. So automatically, from the time uh, from from when they delayed the game, it'll be at least 30. And the way I understand it is, every subsequent lightning strike adds another 30 minutes on to that. Yeah. So we we could while, and we could even see this game called. I mean, I you never know what's going to happen. Well, the teams are headed to the locker room, which that's a little bit different than the weather delay we had at the beginning of the game where they let them stay out on the field. They are headed off to their respective locker rooms. Uh, Matt Lane, do you have your ears on? All right, Matt Lane down on the field. What's, this, what's, what's it look like down there? Yeah, just a, a single flash of lightning. Obviously, the, the referees want to keep everybody safe. So, you know, it automatically starts as a 30-minute delay. Uh, a uh, visual sign of lightning. So 30 minutes uh, kind of going into it, and you'll kind of reevaluate each time it happens. So it's sort of an ongoing thing. Get a good visual, uh, Matt. Hold
<laughs> got very high with okay. your one hand. <laughs> hey, you got to be a team player for us, man. It'd be a great. It'll be a so great I just shot. stand here. Hold, yeah, it'll be a great shot. Hold the metal part as high as you can. I feel real nervous. <laughs> oh man, playing down on the field, doing a good job. We're looking at the radar up here. It appears as though there is a little bit of a cell, kind of bossy. Doesn't look like we're, uh, it, it, it's gonna come right straight over us, but again, a little too close for comfort for these uh, officials. So we are in a weather delay with 8 4 play in the first half, and South Aiken leading Silver Bluff 21 to 9. Again, if you're just joining us, this is, you could really say, the third weather delay that we've had here tonight. Yeah. Because we were delayed here tonight for heat, and then we were delayed for lightning, and now we're in a second lightning. And so we'll take a little bit of a break with them. So we're in a lightning delay in Petticoat Junction with South Aiken leading Silver Bluff 21. This time out on Game Night Live. We are back in Petticoat Junction on the campus of Silver Bluff High School where the score is 21 to nothing. The, uh, the defending state upper state runner up South Aiken Thoroughbreds leading the Silver Bluff Bulldogs. And we are in a lightning delay for the second time here tonight. And um, AB, this South Aiken team, this was the point I was going to hold until the fourth quarter. Are you ready for my big, my big point? What's that? They remind me of the Atlanta. Do you want to know why? I do want to know why. All right, here you go. <laughs> this was the big quarter, and now we got a lot yeah. so we'll say it. I feel like the way that game ended, that, that championship game for last year, over to the game Close, lead. Yeah. They were so like this team has every single waking uh, wow. it had since December. Especially when South Point went on to win the state right. you know, over Hartsville. So you're thinking, you know, we really had an opportunity to win the whole thing. I, I don't think Jim, I agree with you. You know, when you have a bad game, you want to play right over. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have to wait eight months to play. And, uh, you know, matter of fact, longer than eight months, uh, other than the kids that got to play in the Border Bowl, uh, you're talking about, you know, ten months that they had to wait. Now you look at the state championships in Class AA for Silver Bluff. Those last two, Troy Williamson was a big part of those. And, and that, Perry Williamson's on that team. Yeah, and that. Well, there is one good sign here as far as the weather goes. They have not evacuated people from the stands. Yeah. They have not told us to get out of the press box. So they are keeping the players safe. Uh, but it doesn't appear as though they think there's any sort of imminent danger to anybody here at the stadium. So uh, hopefully this will uh, be just a delay and we can get going in just a little bit. We do have some scores from around the area. Burke County uh, leading Grovetown. The last score we had was 28 to zip, second quarter. North Augusta Hammer and Lakeside, 21-0. Butler is on top of the in the second quarter, 7-0. And, boy, at Woo. the half, Thompson, huh. I think they're kind of showing sure that Grovetown scrimmage was a little bit of a fluke. They lead Laney 44-0. By the way, I said earlier that Banks will on to South Carolina State. He actually the Citadel. And we also got a score here, Jefferson County, with an impressive lead at the half over Savannah Christian. It's 24-7. So, on the big networks, when they have a delay like this, they throw it back to somebody in the studio. Yes. You know, then they, then they go to their trailer and they get, you know. They get more makeup. Absolutely, all that kind of. That's not what we're doing here, folks. You never know what you're going to find out and then see and hear in the next 30 minutes as this lightning That's delay. That's right. We do know that uh, our buddy Matt Lane has a special guest down on the sideline, so let's go downstairs for another sideline report and Matt Lane. Thank you, John. Yeah, here with Bert Postel, uh, principal at Silver Bluff High School. Uh, obviously, you know, it's always exciting to begin the year uh, with a football game. I know you guys haven't quite started school yet. Kind of speak about school spirit. Really, it's the beginning of the school year once football gets going around here. Right. That kind of kicks it off. That gets everybody riled up and around the team. And, that, you, know, you know, especially in a community like this, that's your community spirit right there, starting off with the football season. So we're excited about the start of the game tonight. It's a little weird with the delay, but, right. but we're getting there. Yeah, so to begin this year, kind of what's your process each and every year once you you guys start, uh, like you said a second ago, next Wednesday. So kind of what's the process uh, just each and every year for you starting school up? Lots of plans, getting teachers ready, getting their rooms ready, uh, making the plans for the students to come back. We're trying to decorate the school. 
things up, build that school spirit, and get some plans for the kids when they come back in, and we'll be ready for them Wednesday morning. Now, how long are, I guess, the football players and I mean, some other sports going in and around the school, kind of before school starts? Is that getting them ready, conditioning through the end of summer towards the beginning of the year? It is. They stay active all summer. I stand up here, the cheerleaders, the football players. We've had some volleyball camps going on. So they stay busy, mm -hmm. so they're kind of still in the routine. Uh, but they've been building for a while, working out, doing their summer workouts, uh, getting ready. And kind of just talking about the school year, there's a lot of, you know, predictable holidays. You know, you have your fall breaks and then your Christmas breaks. But anything special going on this year? You, you guys got anything planned for this year, not only just in terms of the football team, uh, but just kind of as a high school as a whole? Well, this is my first year at the high school. Oh, uh, cool. Just started about six weeks ago. I've been on the ground for about six weeks. So I'm excited about that. It's all kind of new to me. Uh, I've been a principal for a while, but this is the first year here. It's all kind of new and exciting. Um, we're working this year on community spirit. Spirit. Those are our those are our key things that we want to build up this year to start the year. Very cool. Where were you at uh, before? I came up from Fort Dorchester High School down in the Charleston area. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Very cool. But yeah, so here at Silver Bluff High School, again, the first week of football action. Again, the kids not in school just yet, but really, really enjoying uh, football Friday night atmosphere here. Great crowd, even though the weather not necessarily playing ball just yet, but looks like we're still going to be able to get this one in. Uh, but uh, Bert Postel, uh, Silver Bluff High School, thanks for joining us. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Back to you, John. All right, Matt, appreciate that. Uh, and speaking of Football Friday Night, this is an excellent chance for us to promote our buddy Nathan Palm and Zach Hughes, who uh, it's you know season kickoff night for us here on Game Night Live. Uh, but for the last 17 years right now, I'd be running around the CSRA getting ready for Football Friday Night. Right. So uh, good luck to those two tonight. They will have all of the scores and highlights, including a recap of this game if we're done by then. Yeah, exactly. Uh, at might, they might recap. <laughs> Next week, uh, but you're, you're right. In, in 11:35 over on WJBF. Yeah, he's covering more games, getting footage, and that means more work. And uh, mm -hmm. they do a phenomenal job. And especially last year, I've given him credit. But you know, when you jump into a new area in the middle of the year, right as football season, mm -hmm. and you've got to learn all the teams. Uh, uh, Zach did an excellent job last year with that. And I know they're very excited about it. I, I do have to say, while Matt was doing that interview with Bert Postel, I saw a more uh, pretty. Broad Flashes of lightning off to our right. so yeah. might not bode well for us. Might not bode well for us getting back uh, in the in the uh, in the after the first 30 minute delay is over. Um, Some individual stats right there, uh, John, and of course the big one is Chris uh, Roberts, the running back, 13 carries, 122 yards, two touchdowns, averaging just under 10 yards a carry. Of course, he got banged up there at the very end. Uh, or, well, not the end of the half, right before the uh, break for Lightning. Also, the quarterback, Cody Boynton, just efficient as always, 5 for 17 for 117 yards. So, again, we're still in this Lightning delay, and I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, Bert Postel that uh, Matt Lane interviewed just now, the new principal here at Silver Bluff. He, I had a chance to visit with him this week and uh, when we were here to, to do our school spotlight segment. And he, he was kind of funny. He said he, he's worked in Hilton Head, he's worked in Charleston, and now he's in Petticoat Junction. I said, that's got to be a little bit of a uh, culture shock for you. Yeah. I, I, when he said that, I was thinking that, no offense, but it goes, no. that's a great little community, but you're at the beach and the beach, and then you, you know, nowhere near the beach. And he said, no, he said he, he, he prefers this kind of community, family atmosphere here and how tight-knit everybody was. And that's the one thing that, that, that and you'll see it in the, in the piece that we air at halftime, uh, is that, you know, it, it, these, this town and this the smallness and the tight-knit way this community is put together is what really drew him here. So it's really interesting to see his, his perspective on this place. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when you, and, and the whole community pulls for this football team and, you know, they went, look, it was tough last year. When you go through a tough year when you're not used to it and you've got a brand new coach who's replacing a coach that was so successful now loud, a lot of people were very critical about their displeasure, mm -hmm. and which is really tough. When you're a new coach coming in, they did lose some talent this year. Uh, the cupboard wasn't bare, but they certainly weren't as talented as some of the past teams. And so, you know, you're kind of rooting for Coach to, you know, get this thing turned around a little bit. You're replacing you, Yeah, you're replacing a guy who had done it last year, won, you know, took him to the championship game so many times. And, and, and including course, his last year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Final year here. 
Uh, well, one more time, just in case you're in, we are in a lightning delay at Silver Bluff High School. Uh, the third such delay we have had here tonight. We started the night with a, uh, with a uh, heat delay. They moved kickoff back in the afternoon to 8 o'clock. And then uh, at, right before kickoff, we had some lightning in the area, so they moved uh, kickoff to 8.15. We got to 8 minutes and 41 seconds in the second quarter, and now we are at another lightning delay. And our buddy Matt Lane down on the sidelines is trying to end up interviewing just about everybody in the stands before it's all over because we don't know how long we're going to be here. We, we don't. You and I might get a boggle well, tournament going or something. Well, especially we keep seeing lightning off in the distance. Yeah. And that is, like I said, not a good sign for finishing this game. Haven't seen a flash in about uh, five minutes. So, um, and again, as you can see, people are just kind of well, milling about, killing time. They've seen we got actually a pretty good football game going on here uh, behind the fence. It looks like we do. The little guys would love to be out there on the field, but you know, for the coaches, this is tough because you you really are wanting to to work on things as well because you like you said, this is a non-region game. It doesn't count in any of the playoffs right. really. So you want to work on some things and also. Like this, good hit made on the guy in the black shirt. Sorry. <laughs> if you're South Aiken, you want to get some players in the game mm -hmm. that you might need down the stretch if someone gets hurt, and they might not get an opportunity unless uh, this weather, you know, subsides. But you're right, we got a great game going right here. It doesn't. Uh, 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 they seem to be playing fast and loose with the rules a little bit yeah. in that game, which which I'm fine with. <laughs> we have no rosters, by the way, so we can't pinpoint who's, you know, doing what. But they're uh, having fun with. It. Had any idea they were on TV just then? They might have kept. They had a little. Yeah. Fun. We need something because uh, we. Have, I tell you, the, the one person in this entire stadium who might uh, be a little bit happy about this delay, as you alluded to, is uh, is Roberts because he had just come off yeah. right before the delay. He's got a chance to get in the locker room. I don't know delay or not whether we'd see him again. I mean, the, the funny thing is, they if, may not need if he does stop now, yeah. you're going to see 13 carries, 122 yards. Nice game. You're not going to realize he did it in a quarter and less than a quarter and a half. Yeah. But you're right, it's, uh, you, you don't want to take any chances with him because, again, as good as Moynton is, as good as the receivers are in the defense, the guy that makes his team go is Roberts. And so you don't want to take a chance with him at all in a game, especially when you're already up 21 zip. I was, I was interested when they were zoomed in on the, uh, on the snack bar, the concession stand there. I was going to see if anybody's over there watching, send us up some, uh, some hot dogs. Hey, yeah. Uh, some popcorn. That's right. Matt Lane. Go, go, the concession stand I is on the complete. I thought that was his gig. <laughs> during that. He was such a dude. He told that he was eating hot dogs. Because i got to tell you, if I knew that wasn't going to happen, I, I totally <laughs> would have been against this. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, here we are. We're in a weather delay. Well, and what's we're getting... this like? This is your, you, you've, of course, been around this forever. I'm you were... afraid you guys are not. Oh, wait, look here. we got, uh, we got a guy in the orange shirt going to the 40, yeah. and, and, and then he's just kind of done. This one here, the, the the little guy in the uh, gray shirt. He looks like he's he, got a little he's, tough, a little heart. He doesn't have a, He doesn't have the size, but he has heart. He's got a lot of grit about him. Yeah, I like it. Uh, anyway, no, but I. But you've been at every angle of high school football, whether you're behind the desk for football Friday right. night, whether you're out shooting games mm -hmm. and helping out here and there, getting whatever you had to do. But now, you've done this before, obviously, uh, play by play. But what's this like for your first first one, even though it's a little bit That's early into it? Super nice of you to uh, to ask. I'm afraid you guys are not going to invite me back next week because. <laughs> Is this how it always is? Or are there always John 17 the hours? <laughs> it's George Myers territory. I, I don't have anything to do with it. Uh, no, I am, I'm beyond excited about this. This yeah. is something that uh, I've always wanted to be a part of. I know uh, you and I both uh, had our stint with the uh, old Augusta Stallions That's right. uh, arena yeah. football team. You did it for a couple of years. I did it for a couple of years, and that was a lot of fun. I used to love those games. So. That gave me a taste of it, and yeah. I know you've done more games than you can count over the years. Well, and, uh, we got to work together on some basketball, basketball games. Basketball, uh, really Augusta good. University versus yeah. USC Aiken, and uh, it, 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 but I'm 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 just couldn't be happier to be here and to be part of Game Night Live, and and to be working with you because you yeah, know man. you and I've known each other for so a long. long it's, time, yeah. It's uh, it's so easy and it's it's an easy transition. So I'm excited this season. We've got some great matchups. Yeah. And uh, I just can't wait to get going. And of course, our crew, Nathan Edwards, our spotter, statistician, kind of in the uh, booth with us. And we've got Matt Lane down on the sidelines, really excited about having Matt, a big asset, down there with his knowledge of the game. Uh, also, by the way, I'm being told we want to learn a bit about Silver. Yeah, we have. You guys had a great package you put together, right? Like I said, we uh, spent a good part of our Wednesday out here, uh, Rick Cruson and I, uh, just kind of learning about the school and this community. And uh, here's what we.
we're, we're a smaller school, so we really have that community feel. Um, when I was a student here, I loved it here. It, it was like my second home, it was a family, and I knew when I decided to be a teacher that I wanted to come back here. Looking at the area, um, looking at this school, it has a big tradition, a big history of excellence in athletics, academics. I mean, just driving into the school, you see the signs of all the, all the awards they've won, all the state championships, region championships, and I really wanted to be part of something with that kind of tradition, where the community really backs the school, and the school is a big part of the community. It's more of a focused community, uh, which I've seen already, which is awesome because, for example, already we have two local churches providing breakfast for the teachers. Uh, you don't get that in the big areas as much.